Welcome to the Healthy Skin Show with Jennifer Fugo, where we're flipping everything you've been told about your chronic skin issues upside down and connecting you with alternative solutions your dermatologist never told you about. Welcome back to episode 280 of the Healthy Skin Show. In today's episode, I'm going to connect some dots for our community here on the connection between low stomach acid and chronic skin rash problems like eczema, psoriasis, rosacea, dandruff, and hives. Funny enough, I've somehow recorded 279 episodes to this point, yet never fully discussed this topic more in depth. Since we're going to talk about stomach acid, we need to quickly touch on gut function, since stomach acid is one of the steps in this process. If you've not heard of the term gut function before, it involves breaking down and extracting nutrients from food and beverages and moving the contents of what you eat and drink through the digestive tract to ultimately expel as waste, also known as poop. One really important thing you must take away from this conversation is that there are no backup systems in your gut. So generally, if one step fails, it triggers problems from that point onward in the digestive and absorption process. A simple illustration of this is step one of the digestive process, chewing your food. If you tend to eat very quickly without chewing appropriately, There are no backups anywhere else to manually break down the food into smaller pieces that allow for optimum digestion. As I often tell clients, you don't have a second set of teeth in your gut. Similarly, having sufficient stomach acid is a crucial step in gut function that serves two distinct crucial roles for which there are, again, no backup systems. The first role is to act as a chemical barrier to kill organisms coming down your esophagus. This helps protect your small and large intestines from unwanted organisms that could cause issues. The second role of stomach acid is to break biochemical bonds between amino acids and other nutrients like vitamin B12 and iron so that your body can absorb them once they reach your small intestine. So when stomach acid is chronically insufficient, you will experience a failure of both of these roles, opening you up to potential nutrient deficiencies and unwanted inhabitants that get swallowed, be it from food, water, and even your mouth microbiome. Low stomach acid is actually more common than you'd think. In fact, the symptoms of low stomach acid are nearly identical to high stomach acid. So if you were told that you have too much stomach acid, that might not actually be the case. Common symptoms of low stomach acid can look like heartburn, indigestion, nausea, loss of appetite, burping, fatigue, iron anemia, or issues increasing iron on your labs, megaloblastic anemia, which could also look like low folate, low vitamin B6, or low vitamin B12, or maybe a combo of those three. Feeling like the food just heavily sits in your stomach area near your sternum, bad breath, and seeing food particles in your stool. The reason why low stomach acid happens are one of six reasons. Sometimes it's a combination, but it's good to cover them all. The first is that chronic stress and past traumas can prevent your body from entering what's known as the rest and digest or parasympathetic mode, which is imperative to digest and absorb food. The sympathetic or fight or flight mode will deprioritize nourishing your body because its focus is ultimately to help you get to safety. The second reason is H. pylori or Helicobacter pylori, which is a very common bacterial infection of the stomach. It has an enzyme that deactivates stomach acid, which is why when you have an H. pylori infection, you would end up with low stomach acid. The third reason is having insufficient nutrients to make stomach acid like sodium, chloride, and zinc. That would create a clear problem from a nutritional perspective. Also, point number four would be autoimmunity. That could be a factor. And in this case, antiparietal cell antibodies attack the parietal cells in your stomach that make stomach acid, 
thus making it difficult for your body to make stomach acid. The fifth reason has to do with aging. And unfortunately, this does play a role because as we near 65 years old, stomach acid levels naturally drop. And reason number six is just eating too quickly and failing to appropriately chew your food can be a factor in creating a low stomach acid production situation. In my private clinic, about 85 to 90% of chronic skin rash clients do not have sufficient stomach acid, which sets the stage for other unfortunate consequences that play a role in their condition. So if you have any of this going on, or this really resonates with you and you feel intuitively like this could be a factor, it's important to figure out if you have low stomach acid and what you need to do to take care of it. This episode is brought to you by my skincare line, Dermaquel. The beauty of these skincare products are that they are especially crafted for those struggling with chronic skin rash issues based on my research and clinical experience from my private practice. They focus on organic ingredients that are clean like zinc, aloe, and hemp oil that support and calm rashed, dry, angry skin. There's no unnecessary chemicals or additives that can further dry out your skin or mess with your hormones. And I'm so excited for you to add these creams into your routine. Check them out at quellshop.com and use the coupon code GET15OFF to get 15% off your first order. I'll put a link in the description below. And now let's jump back to the video. So if left unresolved for a lengthy period, Low stomach acid can cause many problems that impact not only your skin, but also basic functions of your body. That's why identifying this issue is so important. Here are some of the problems created by low stomach acid. First, the process of protein breakdown gets hijacked, stopping protein from being broken down into smaller fragments of amino acids. This can cause a significant drop in protein absorption in the gut, which ultimately depletes your amino acid stores. Second, you can develop nutrient deficiencies, especially seen in psoriasis cases, because low stomach acid prevents the bonds that link certain nutrients like vitamin B12 and iron to proteins in food from being broken down. That means you lose access to these nutrients your body does not make and must be derived from your diet. Third, protease enzymes in your stomach won't work effectively since they are pH dependent. So low stomach acid ultimately means that the stomach isn't acidic enough for these enzymes to do their job further cutting bonds that link together amino acids. Fourth, low bone density can show up with time, and low stomach acid causes this because you actually lose access to these crucial minerals that are found in your food. Number five, gut bacteria start to ferment proteins, which should not happen, friends. It should not happen. Proteins must be broken down into amino acids, so they can be absorbed in your small intestine. Low stomach acid messes up this process, ultimately allowing the protein to end up in the large intestine where bacteria begin to ferment and putrefy these proteins, the byproducts of which are very inflammatory. And number six, it also allows organisms access to your small and large intestine that should have been killed by stomach acid. This can result in overgrowth situations like SIBO and the presence of opportunistic and pathogenic organisms in the GI tract that cause even more inflammation. And of course, you can end up with a combo of the unpleasant symptoms I mentioned already. So you can see that this one problem can cause bigger issues, not only in your gut, but also that will eventually impact your skin. So if you want to test your own stomach acid level, there's a really easy at-home test that's virtually free, and I'm going to link up the simple step-by-step directions on how to do it in this episode's show notes for you. I ask all of my chronic skin rash clients to do this because it helps us see what's going on with the process of digestion, and you can even do this test even if you don't have heartburn. So head over there and that way you'll be able to download my free guide. 
Now, at this point, you can see the importance of having an acidic stomach environment with sufficient acid. And there are some ways to naturally increase stomach acid, but I want to manage your expectations here in that these practices or strategies are not foolproof, meaning that they cannot universally correct the issue depending on exactly what's going on to ultimately cause low stomach acid. So if you want to give them a shot, these are the five things that could potentially help. First, it's important to slow down when you're eating. Sit down and spend time smelling and appreciating your food before eating, since doing so can help stimulate stomach acid secretions. And by the way, sitting in the car and eating while driving does not it, that's not what I'm talking about. You know, that's not actually slowing down when you're eating, okay? Second, it's important to chew your food well. It is extremely common to rush through meals without sufficiently chewing food. So remember, you don't have teeth in your stomach or anywhere else in your GI tract except in your mouth. So chewing your food means that the appropriate sized food bits can be more efficiently broken down further by stomach acid and digestive enzymes. Soft foods can be chewed five to 10 times before swallowing, but tougher, harder foods should be chewed 25 to 30 times before swallowing. Third, you want to reduce your stress whenever possible. One reality of constantly being stressed is that your body is on alert and constantly in that fight or flight mode I mentioned already. Therefore, digestion and absorption of the food you eat are deprioritized. And I've got some great tips to help reduce stress in this week's show notes. Number four, clean up your diet and add more nutrient-dense foods onto your plate. Heartburn and indigestion can be a sign that your system can't tolerate all of the processed, fried, and refined foods in your diet. And you may need to add more minerals into your diet, like sodium, chloride, and zinc to help your body make stomach acid. And number five, add some additional acid to your stomach. Now this can be supported with either oral supplements that contain betaine HCL, which is essentially stomach acid, or naturally acidic foods like lemon juice or apple cider vinegar. Now a word of caution before using apple cider vinegar shots. Apple cider vinegar is so acidic that it can strip the enamel off of your teeth. And this actually happened to my father. So be very careful with this option. I've also seen a number of posts online about drinking celery juice to increase stomach acid. Despite my greatest effort, I could not find any science to back this claim up. I searched PubMed and to date, as of Today, February 2023, nothing exists to support this claim. And one final point, if you do have an H. pylori infection, I don't recommend taking betaine HCL supplements as clinically it may make it harder to clear the organism. And taking betaine HCL may exacerbate gastritis and potential ulcers. I generally suggest digestive enzyme-only supplement formulas until you know for sure if H. pylori is a factor. To dive deeper into H. pylori and how to deal with it, I've got a great resource for you over in episode 135 of the Healthy Skin Show podcast. Now, if you've got any questions or thoughts to share about this particular episode or you want to see the resources I've put together for you, head on over to skinterrupt.com forward slash 280. That way we can keep the conversation going. And if you found this episode really helpful and enlightening, please share this episode with others in the Skin Rash community who could use this type of information to better understand how to support their body and all of the nutritional and biochemical needs that it has for optimum gut function and skin health. Before you head off for your day, take a moment to rate and review the Healthy Skin Show on your podcast platform and then hit the subscribe button so you can tune in each week for new research, clinical tips like this, strategies that are more integrative than maybe you're getting from your doctor, personal stories, and inspiration on your journey to rebuild healthy skin. And let's connect over on Instagram. I'm at Jennifer Fugo. 
Thanks so much for tuning in, and I look forward to digging deeper with you in the next episode.